The Savior's message to us is clear. We have been treated with kindness, but we have not fully understood the depth of His teachings. Do we not desire to be filled with knowledge and wisdom? Our hearts may be intoxicated with worldly desires, but do we not want to be sober and clear-minded? The Savior reminds us that we have been blessed to witness His presence, to have conversations with Him, and to listen to His words. However, there is a warning for those who have seen His divine nature. Woe to them, for they may be tempted to doubt the truth. They have witnessed. On the other hand, the Savior blesses those who have not seen Him physically, who have not associated, spoken, or listened to anything from this human being. He assures them that life is theirs to embrace and enjoy. Furthermore, the Savior explains that He healed us when we were spiritually sick so that we may reign in His kingdom. But there is a warning for those who have found temporary relief from their afflictions. They will only suffer again. In contrast, blessed are those who have never been sick but have known rest before encountering any troubles. The kingdom of God belongs to them. The message from the Savior is to be filled with His Spirit and not to leave any empty space within ourselves. Otherwise, the one who is to come can mock us for our lack of understanding. Peter questions the need to be filled again when they are already filled. The Savior clarifies that to be filled is good and to lack is bad. Yet it can also be good to be lacking because it gives us room to grow. At the same time, being filled can bring us to a state of perfection. Therefore, we should strive to be lacking when we have the opportunity to be filled and be filled when we have the chance to lack. This continuous cycle of growth enables us to be filled even more. So let us be filled with the Spirit. But let us also acknowledge that human reason is limited. Our souls yearn for a deeper connection with the divine. In response to the Savior's words, I express my readiness to obey His will. I reveal that I have already sacrificed my worldly attachments and followed Him. However, I ask for the means to resist the temptations of the wicked devil. The Lord responds by questioning the worth of our obedience. If we do not receive the rewards that the Father grants to those who overcome Satan's temptations, but if we are afflicted and persecuted by Satan while remaining faithful to the Father's will, the Lord assures us of the Father's love, we will become His equals, beloved by the Father's forethought and our own free choice. The Lord urges us not to cling to earthly pleasures or fear suffering. He reminds us that we have not yet endured the insults, false accusations, imprisonment, unjust condemnation, senseless crucifixion, or burial that He experienced. Therefore, we should not hesitate to sacrifice our physical desires when we have the Spirit surrounding us as a protective wall. In conclusion, let us embrace the teachings of the Savior, be open to being filled with His wisdom, and rely on the strength of the Spirit to resist temptation. In doing so, we can experience the love and rewards that the Father has in store for us. In the name of Jesus, amen.